This is Essex Wildlife Trust's Wildlife TV and today we're talking about one of my favourite birds in the whole world. There's actually one just over my shoulder, just up here. This bird has travelled 5,000 miles to be here to breed on this farm in this stable. For many people it's the first sign of summer and for me whenever I see them it always puts a smile on my face. It is of course the swallow. The swallows that are here on the farm have only been here about a week now. I think the first one arrived April 9th this year. We always have a bit of a competition to see who can guess when the first one arrives. It's always very exciting when you see the first swallow. It kind of lifts your spirits because you think, you know, spring is here. They say the first, you know, one swallow doesn't make a summer. Well, actually, from someone like me, I get very excited when I see a swallow. But these birds have arrived all the way from South Africa. That's the other side of the world, 5,000 miles away. It's incredible. And these birds will have gone through 14 different countries. 14! They don't know anything about borders, but they just crossed the Sahara. They come here. It's an incredibly dangerous journey, and it's quite amazing that they get here. How do they find it? You know, they don't have sat-navs. They don't have maps. They will use, uh, at night, they will use the, the stars if it's clear and they will use the Earth's magnetic field. They may also use things like mountains or rivers, landscapes, to actually show them the way, and they will learn that over many years. But these birds haven't just randomly turned up here. This one that's just flown in the barn uh, behind me, that hasn't just randomly turned up here. That was probably the bird that was here last year, and probably in this exact stables. Now, I know that sounds quite far-fetched, and you think, well, how do you know that? Well, ornithologists have been ringing birds for uh, over 100 years now, and we know that actually you can tell where a bird has been and where it's come from by the number on the ring. So a bird will have a ring on it like this. You catch the bird in nets. It's very safe. It doesn't hurt the birds at all. And you put a very small, a very light metal ring on it that has a specific number. So if you put a ring on that bird last year and then you catch a bird this year, you can see, has it still got that same ring on? Has it got the same number? And I've done that. I've ringed a bird uh, the previous year, caught it the following year, and it's got the same number. And it blows your mind. You think, this bird that I'm having holding in my hand is the bird I was holding in my hand last year. And it's gone all the way to South Africa and come all the way back again 12 months later. Amazing. If that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will. So despite only being on the farm for a week, most of these swallows are straight back into nest construction. But rather than building them from scratch, most of these birds are wanting to actually just repair and refurb their nests. It takes a huge amount of effort for a swallow to build a nest from scratch. Maybe a thousand visits to come and collect things like this, wet mud. This is what they're after, this lovely wet mud. And they'll use a beak full of this, much the same as you would a brick if you, if you were building a brick wall. So they will create layer after layer after layer of these little beakfuls of mud, constructing a little muddy cup in the corner of the stable. But actually, they don't want to do that every year. So largely speaking, these birds will be just using last year's nest and they will just, yeah, touch it up, make it spruce, make it homely, and then they'll crack on.
This nest has got so many horse hairs, it's almost, it's almost got its own goatee beard. At this time of year, it's very common to see swallows flying around with feathers in their beaks. So they'll be using these feathers to line the nest, just to make them a little bit softer. You've got a muddy cup, so it'd be not much nicer to have some uh, feathers just to soften up the bottom of it. Also, horse hairs are very, very common, particularly around here. We've got paddocks full of horses. Those horse hairs are woven into the nests, and some of these nests are quite elaborate, almost look quite bearded. It's quite fantastic. So once we've sorted the nest out, then the swallows will be laying their eggs. So they'll be laying about between three and seven eggs, quite pale eggs, and they'll be incubating those for probably about a fortnight. After those eggs have hatched, they'll then be feeding those chicks. They'll be feeding them uh, flying insects, so the swallows flying around the paddocks, catching insects, bringing them back to the chicks. And those chicks will take between three and four weeks to fledge. Hopefully all of these pairs of swallows on the farm will have at least two clutches, that's the average. If the weather's good and if there's lots of food, some of these birds may even have three clutches before they migrate south. Now, although the swallows have moved in for the summer, there is actually one animal that lives here all year round. So I thought we should at least say hello. Bob, you gonna say hello? Good girl. This is Barbie. They say never work with animals. It's a doddle. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Good girl. So why are these birds migrating in the first place? Well, this is something that has challenged scientists for a long time. And if we're honest, we don't know in a lot of cases why birds do it. It's still a bit of a mystery. And I actually personally love that. It's good that there's certain aspects of natural history, which we're still puzzled about. There's definitely a degree of genetics going on there. Some imprinting over many tens of thousands of years and over many generations to have these animals migrating. There's certainly something to do with food availability, maybe uh, nesting potential, also predator avoidance. In some senses, in the UK, it's easy to understand why swallows might want to migrate away from the UK because in the autumn it gets a little bit cold and wet and there aren't the insects for them to feed on. So we can understand them wanting to go back to Africa. The question that we're all asking, why do birds come from Africa to here? Isn't it lovely and sunny in Africa? Who knows? Now I'm very lucky, this paddock is only a couple of miles from where I live so I can really come down here as often as I like. And to be frank, I could sit around here for hours. I could sit in the field, be surrounded by the swallows swooping down in front of me, uh, or come up here by the stables and listen to them singing away. I love their little whistles and clicks. To me they sound like a sort of a bird version of a dolphin, the way they kind of click away and, and it's just so happy and it, it really just puts you in a good mood, so I love it. Maybe we'll be back a bit later in the year and we'll see how they get on, maybe when they've got nestlings and we'll see how successful they've been because that would be nice to see. But if you want more content like this, please don't go to Essex Wildlife Trust's website, which is essexwt.org.uk. Look out for uh, Wildlife TV on our social media platforms and engage with more content like this. It's such a great time when we're kind of largely stuck at home at the minute, which is so frustrating, but go online and you can get some inspiration and get some ideas about how to engage with wildlife. But please do keep enjoying wildlife, keep watching it, stay connected to nature and have a lot of fun.